time I talked about Gaussian process, but now I will show you how we can use it for uh, local volatility and implied volatility in option trading. As you know, there are several strategies for option trading, covered calls, vertical spread, and butterfly spread, but it is so interesting that people usually don't care about implied volatility. They trust that the volatility that is written in their platform, either an interactive broker or any other platform. But uh, it is interesting that I will show you why we are paying more premium for anything, for options, for a casino, for insurance companies. So implied volatility is the market's forecast of a likely movement in a securities price. So there is a difference between implied volatility and realized volatility. Because implied volatility, look to the implied volatility at various points in time and past, is a forward looking. So we have the kind of sense of what the future might be. So it is interesting that data shows that it's a data it, it's a mean reversion, it has a mean reversion property, and we can take advantage of that as well. So as you see, it, it, the distribution is skewed toward rich. We are paying more premium for options. So initially, buy underpriced options or strategies or sell overpriced options or strategies. That is what we call volatility trading. And uh, there are serial correlations in the absence of data. The best volatility guess over the next time period is the volatility which occurred over the previous time period. We can use mean reversion. Volatility tends to, to return to its historical average. You know, it's a data-driven um, sentence, you know. It's not for me. Data has shown. Momentum. A trend in volatility is likely to continue. So black shows, why are we just using black shows in 1970? So black shows, mu and sigma, they are both constant. Can you imagine some interest rate or just or a return of a stock remains keep, keeping them constant? Can you model it? Okay, they, they just um, derived uh, a PDE using Ito iteration, they related a PDE to a stochastic differential equations, and then that's beautiful, but does it really work? You know, the Black Scholes model depends on exercise price, time to expiration, underlying price, volatility, interest rate. So if we just put the data that we are getting from, for example, uh, interactive brokers, you can uh, you can uh, do a backward computation iteratively and uh, uh, calculate for volatility. That's called implied volatility. But why Gartz models don't represent reality? Because the assumption is that Gartz models rely on the assumption that shocks to asset price and prices and Asset volatilities arise from a single source. So stochastic volatility, general class of volatility models, which are which is more general, we call it local volatilities. We can define it, but here it's interesting that this is going to uh, it has a mean reversion properties. Sigma bar has a as a it is derived from a line period. So there is a relationship between Gaussian process and stochastic volatility, as I show you in a second. So we want to predict the distribution of implied volatilities. We have one to we have moneyness, time to maturity, and implied volatility. So if we solve this Black Scholes equation, uh, we so C is for call, P is for put, we can do for, for both of them. But uh, the predictive probability of Gaussian process that I mentioned in my last lecture is, is as false. So if, if epsilon is zero, there is no noise, then it's just exactly the uh, Black-Scholes equation. But if we add some epsilon due to lack of good modeling of Black-Scholes, for example, 
then we have the true volatility, true implied volatility. Hyperparameter optimization using maximum likelihood. You can use gradient based, for example, to catch the uh, those uh, hyperparameters. But you can you, you can do there with a grid search and random search. I prefer random search. But, and if you want to be very p a perfect person, you can use Bayesian optimization to get the hyperparameters. But you can also calculate the z-score as it is done in this paper written by these guys in Korea. So they, they just did, did that and calculated the call options to see if it is overvalued or not. So they constructed these results, as you see, uh, and K is the strike price. So they calculated implied volatility for different strike prices. So the result is as follows, and uh, but but the but the critical thinking allows us to understand. They're using black shoals as a mean of distribution is not acceptable since since then it may have huge skewness and do you trust black shoals normal distribution assumption for confidence interval wrong assumption don't make bad assumption respect your virtue the article didn't use the fact that implied volatility has mean reversion properly to historical volatility so this article is much better than previous article so it uses a local volatility instead of saying that black shoals is the mean of that Gaussian process. And so the algorithm, the steps of the algorithm is just the same. Here, the innovation is just using local volatility. And I introduced two great books for option pricing. As you know, uh, uh, when I was in Manchester University, I was attending financial mathematics courses and uh, the professor, he was talking about uh, using optimal stopping theorems. And it was really elegant. It was really interesting, much more powerful than these books that I introduced now.